Gamers Nexus Expose on Linus Tech Tips is here. Assassin's Creed is scared of Spider-Man. And I'm scared of cool temperatures. Airjet gonna frighten me all over. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news like find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Tuesday, August 15th, 2023. I had to Did do you it say twice. 2050? I, I, I messed up, all right? The date's a little hard to say sometimes. That's right. Especially as my mind's been reeling from trying to cover this, this first topic in a way that is uh, both fair uh, and doesn't necessarily uh, give in to my clear biases because one of the things that's going to come up in this debate between Gamers Nexus and Alliance Tech Tips is the fact that there are biases that are happening on all sides, which is one of the things that Steve called Linus out for in the reviews. However, everybody has a bias, and that's not against what Steve said, which I'll get to in a second. I have a bias. Obviously, very close to Linus and his team, they've sponsored our Cannonball charity events. Uh, they are tattooed on my butt. I guess I have to disclose that. That's something that's there, but I'm gonna do my best to try to be aware of those and still deliver this topic to you in a way that is fair, meaningful, and gives you the gist of what's going on. So, Gamers Nexus yesterday published the video, The Problem with Linus Tech Tips, the accuracy, ethics, and responsibility. I highly encourage you go watch that 44 minute and 14 second video for yourself so you can get the detailed, breakdown, but to make sure I don't miss any topics, and because it's a 44 minute video, I'm just gonna cover the timestamps here to highlight the actual different topics that they talked about there. Number one, that this isn't drama. Steve did not monetize this video. They're not making any money off of it. This is seriously just to bring awareness to the community as a whole, but a lot of Linus rushing things due to meeting deadlines and getting a lot of things wrong. GPU review errors, CPU cooler test errors, PSU review errors, CPU review errors, as well as asterisk corrections in their videos that seem to be popping up more and more lately. And one of the things Steve does acknowledge is the fact that reviewers will always make errors. This is not something that Linus is necessarily going to be alone in. However, it's the frequency that it's happening with compounded with the fact that Linus does appear to be shifting from being entertainment or edutainment into trying to pivot, especially with LTT Labs, as one of the foremost places where reviews are going to happen and as an authority on these types of things. So that was the first 25 minutes of the video. Then going into other things, such as irresponsible actions and conflicts of interest in terms of ethics. The biggest one that I think I see a lot of people addressing online is the issue of what happened with a billet labs review, which we're gonna cover a little bit more in depth. Additionally, things like on the short circuit channel, they reviewed the Ponage mouse, where they said it didn't glide nice, and that's because it had plastic on the feet, which Linus actually did address in the most recent WAN show that they covered. He did bring up how there were some processes there, but really, Gamers Nexus video painting this whole picture that there are serious errors that are happening on Linus' side. There are some ethical concerns, specifically when it comes to the Billet Labs thing, but the community response to Gamers Nexus video seems to be positive as a whole. Jay's Two Cents responding that they do appreciate putting reviewers to task, saying as the Walmart greeter to the tech world, I'm glad you are managing the service department. That seems to be the general sense that we're getting that overall, a lot of people are acknowledging that Linus might be potentially pumping out content way too quickly and then allowing errors to pop up in their videos that then happen to mislead a whole bunch of people because of the fact that they have one of the largest reaches in tech and specifically computer hardware YouTube. But the biggest issue specifically comes with the Billets lab review that they did where they did not review it properly. The actual product they were testing was supposed to be done with a 3090 Ti. Linus said, frick it, we're gonna do it on a 4090 because we don't have the right GPU. Then in a WAN show interview, they were trying to discuss whether or not this was the right thing. Luke pushed back and was like, you didn't test it with the thing that was right. And Linus was like, what does it matter? I $500 of employee time could have gone into it and would have been a different conclusion. But then after that, it turns out that Bill Labs had requested that they sent that prototype back to them. And instead of that happening, they auctioned it off at LTX. Now, one of the things that Gamers Nexus, I believe did not mention and Linus corrects him for is that that auction did not go to Linus's pockets. That was actually for the Extra Life charity. And as a winner of one of those auctions, of a prototype, by the way. Yeah. You, can you go grab it for me? Where's it at? It's, it's, where my finger, yonder, sir. The fingies. Where my fingy bear north. I got a prototype, but the biggest problem that comes with this is Billet Labs requested their product back. Allegedly, Linus's team said that they were going to get it back and then they 
actually gave it to somebody else, which brings up problems in terms of number one, ethically not cool. Number two, if it got sold to a competitor, they could use it to backwards engineer their own solution that would happen. I'm not so much at risk with the prototype that I got, but Again, Linus did not personally financially profit off of the sale of the Billet Labs thing. And one of the reasons I spent so much money on the prototype metal screwdriver is because it did go to charity, which then you could argue that Linus profited at least by image because of how much money they raised for charity that was part of it. So it, again, just bad all around. However, one of the things that has popped up since the release of the Gamers Nexus video, Linus has responded over on the Linus Tech Tips forum with specifically a few things that I'm sure you guys are gonna wanna be interested in. Number one, this won't be a big WAN show segment about this or anything. Most of what I have to say I've said already and I've done so privately, specifically saying to Steve, I've expressed my disappointment that he didn't go through proper journalistic practice is in creating this piece. He has my email and number along with numerous other members of our team and could have asked me for context that may have proven to be valuable, like the fact that we didn't sell the monoblock, but rather auctioned it for charity due to a miscommunication. And the fact that while we haven't yet sent payment, we have already agreed to compensate Billet Labs for the cost of their prototype. So it does appear like they're trying to make good there. That doesn't address the error of potentially selling it to a competitor, which is still up in the air. However, we'll discuss a little Few more details in a second. Continuing on, there are other issues, but I've told him that I won't be drawn into a public sniping match over this and that I'll be continuing to move forward in good faith as part of team media when and if he's ready to do so again, I'll be ready. So seeming to put a little bit of the burden on Steve for how this was handled. However, I think one of the criticisms that I've seen around this is that while Steve appears to have not reached out to Linus directly for comment on the video, a lot of what Steve talked about in this video was already public information. He wasn't necessarily addressing things that happened behind the scenes. There were a few miscommunications, especially when it comes to the charity auction thing, but by and large, a lot of what publicly was discussed here was publicly available. He was not digging into things behind the scene where you would then be like, do you have a comment? Because Linus's comments is I put out the video. Like this is this is what I have put out there. I'm not gonna read the full breadth of Linus's response, but specifically with the Billets Lab thing, he says that he still disagrees that the Billets Lab video is an accuracy issue. It's more that I just read the room wrong. We could have retested it with perfect accuracy, but to do so properly, accounting for which cases it could be installed in and which radiators it would be plumbed with would have been impossible, also didn't affect the conclusion of the video, or so I thought. I wanted to evaluate it as a product, and as a product, if it could manage to compete with the temperatures of the highest end block on the planet, it still would make sense to buy. So from my point of view, retesting it and finding out that yes, it did in fact run cooler made no difference to the conclusion, so it really didn't make a difference. However, he talked with a member of his team, turns out that he is coming to the conclusion that potentially his team pushed against him with this and he might have come to a different conclusion had he listened to another member of what's going on. Ending it with, either way, I'm sorry I've got the community's priorities mixed up on this one and that we didn't show the billet in the best light. Our intention wasn't to hurt anyone. We wanted no one to buy it because it's an egregious waste of money no matter what temps it runs at and we want a billet to make something marketable so they can, you know, eat. So he tries to posit that the reason it's okay that he reviewed it wrong was because, hey, this is actually a bad product and this company won't survive long or not if they actually move forward with this prototype regardless of whatever I did wrong a few degrees Celsius temperature difference doesn't change the conclusion of the video which is hey billet labs you're not going to survive long with this product so it's a little doesn't seem like he's necessarily apologizing for anything besides the fact that they did mess up on actually selling the prototype specifically in a different comment line it says bill has sent us a quote i don't know or care how they arrived at the value if they're good i'm good with regards to how much they're going to be paying for them with the prototype and ending all of the comments at least of the time of recording with the fact that they're trying to improve trying to get better and this is one of the things that linus does publicly say on the WAN show, if you happen to watch his WAN shows, which they're three, four hours plus. So I mean, 44 minute Gamers Nexus video is long. So WAN show is gonna be even longer. They do call out all of the issues that are happening behind the scenes. Like the fact that one of their engineers at the labs called out Gamers Nexus and hardware unboxed for their testing practices. Linus directly said, I'm not gonna fire him for that. But also we didn't hire him to be a PR person and maybe we should actually have better practices for how they're gonna engage the media in the future. So there's a lot to cover here. I tried to 
give you the rough understanding both from Gamers Nexus side as well as uh, comments that haven't been made known in a video by Linus so that you can see what's going on. I wanna toss this question off to you. What do you think of this entire story that's going down? The slip in quality over at LTT when it comes to the review quality, the slip in ethics that Steve from Gamers Nexus brought up. Additionally, Linus's response to this whole thing, where are you sitting at with how you feel on this? I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. I kept quiet. Do you have anything to add? Because you're uh, you're less a, biased than I am. This is a, a very delicate topic. I'd rather just, just... I'm gonna leave it there. But you know where I'm not gonna leave you? With your PC or anything that you have that you wanna buy or sell because of today's video sponsor, Jawa. If you're looking to sell things that you actually own and that people haven't requested back from you, Jawa is the marketplace for gamers buy gamers where you can sell either your PC, your PC parts, or if you're looking to buy, especially for back to school, you need a laptop, you need some peripherals, you can check out Jawa for that. Whether it's just one component to get ready to play that new video game like Assassin's Creed, or it's for the whole setup, you can buy with their verified sellers who can even do commission builds to get you a PC that's gonna match exactly what you need. And if you wanna discuss any of this, you can head on over to their Discord community, which is full of thousands of members who are more than willing and happy to discuss what the latest plan is for you or even the latest tea on what's going on in the TechTuber community. So whether you're looking for a budget or you're looking to ball, you can check out Jawa at the link in the video description for gamers, buy gamers, get buy, build, sell, trade, all that good stuff. Big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Okay, that intro topic was basically a hot news in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna speed run mostly through the rest of these articles. Number one, AMD can't even update their own patches to make their CPUs not vulnerable anymore. Their Zen 1 vulnerability patch that they did which was a division by zero bug, didn't patch everything, so they had to reissue a second patch. Boom, roasted. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Mirage, not gonna be as fun to play as Spider-Man, so they moved the game up a week earlier to October 5th. Boom, roasted, scared of spiders. What you gonna do? I don't know, but this is actually, I, I can't roast them for this because this is one of the very few times where a game goes gold. And it's like, just kidding, we're coming out a week earlier. We're not yeah. delaying the yeah. game. That's Could this be a good thing for Ubisoft or will it be, man, the first week is is rough because they need a lot more time to patch this bad boy. We'll have to wait and see. I kind of want to praise them for it, but it could potentially be a bad thing. And you can know whether or not the products on Amazon are a bad thing because they have AI generated review summaries that you can check out that are going to be rolling out sometime soon. It's going to conglomerate all the reviews and then give you a general idea specifically in different areas like it's easy to use or the performance is what you think. This will not help if you're trying to find that one. The only reason I go to Amazon reviews is if the answer section doesn't answer a very niche topic that I need to know, like does this mug have a secret hole three quarters of the way up where it can pee out all of my coffee because they don't put that anywhere. And I'm, I'm experiencing this issue. Anyways, that's, so this wouldn't help me because I don't go to Amazon reviews for any other reason. Anyways, we gotta go UFD deals fast. For these speed. Yay deals! First up we have the Acer EK27i, this 27 inch 1080p 100Hz VA gaming monitor. It's going for only $99.99 with the included promo code making it $50 off and a great entryway into high refresh rate monitors. Woo! And then next up we have the Elgato HD60X external capture card going for only $176.70 making it $23.29 off. Take any discount you can get on Elgato products. I actually use this one in my home steam streaming setup. Because it's the only one that supports VRRs, yes. right? Yeah. And then lastly, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G with the graphics integrated, all that good stuff for only $119.99 with the coupon, making it $139.01 off. Whew. And with that, the deal's done. Speed. Okay, let's phase into each other. Oh, that was so fast. Okay, moving on. Netflix wants you to play video games on Netflix. Okay, they're going to allow you to stream things over the cloud. They have a new game controller app that they launched that you have to use to play. What? But you can also use keyboard and mouse. So this is going to be limited beta to Canada and the UK. PC and Max are actually going to work and it's oxen free that you can play. Oxen free. So it's also going to work with a whole bunch of connected TV platforms that you can see on your screen right there. Reese, very excited about oxen free. I love that game. Netflix is trying to move into cloud gaming because you got to expand somewhere when you are the largest 
biggest movie streaming site and you're losing subscribers and pissing everybody off with your extra charges and forcing them to sign up if Let's they don't go. want to. I almost forgot for a second. Do you pay for your own Netflix? I do. Oh, see, that's why you forgot. I'm the, I, I pay for mine too, so people are mooching off of me. And then lastly, let's talk about revolutionizing the PC cooling industry, Airjet, which is a company that I'm very excited about and always want to bring you news whenever it happens because they're tiny little solid state coolers that vibrate the air in a way that has no moving parts. It's an incredible technology. Yes, so they showed this off at Computex. PC World did an exclusive with the Zotac Z-Box where they showed that just placing this cooler on a little NUC PC gets it to run so much faster with no active cooling. It's incredible. And Airjet showing off that it can even work on things like SSDs, PCI Express 5.0 SSDs, impossible to cool right now. And if you do, you got little loud fans going ee! blowing on it, the air jets are gonna get rid of that. So they showed it working on PCI Express 5.0 SSDs, getting up to 14 gigabytes per second. They showed that it could lower skin temperatures on a compact SSD by 20 degrees Celsius, and also that it could work for a 64 terabyte SSD server. I'm excited for the implementations of Airjet. I wanna see where Forest Systems brings this. They are invested in by Intel. This would be great in MacBook Airs. Ultrabooks, yeah. all that kind of stuff, like just cooling down the smaller technology or potentially making it so something like the Strix Point APU that we're expecting could yeah. get a solid state cooler and maybe run a little bit faster. I don't know, just thinking out loud. And I'm gonna think less about this episode of Hot News because it was a T1. It boy. was a T1. Well, if if you don't mind, let me know how you thought we covered the, the Gamers Nexus LTT thing down below in the comments because I did my best to keep personal opinion out of it and just make sure that we're giving you the details of what's going on. We'll see you back here for more hot tech news tomorrow.